Good day brothers and sisters, my name is Pastor Lawrence and welcome to another video today where we're going to talk about God can supply all our needs. Now this is part one because next time we will talk about part two. But first let's pray. Father, thank you that I can be with my brothers and sisters today. And Lord, as we're going to talk about the miracles you did in the Bible to supply for your people, Father. I pray right now and right here during this sermon, Lord, that my friend, Lord, that his faith or her faith will grow and be uplifted and that they will know and realize that we serve a God that's more powerful than anything we can think of and that will and can and already supplied everything that we need and i pray that in jesus name amen let's look at the first verse philippians 4 verse 19 says but my god shall supply all your needs according to what his riches in glory by who by christ jesus matthew 6 verse 33 these are the words of jesus christ himself but seek ye first the what the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you psalm 23 verse 1 a psalm of david the lord is my shepherd i shall not want this is a really famous verse and i love it myself because i can confess and i can testify that I never want, you know, sometimes we wonder, we think we make plans, but in the end we don't want. Because Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Romans 8 verse 32 says, He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, who shall he not with him also freely give us? all things wow the father started by giving his one and only son christ jesus and here the bible says that shall he not with him with jesus also freely give us all things god is the source of all supply let's look at a few verses psalm 145 verse 15 to 16 let's read it together the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou giveth them their meat in due season. Thou open thine hand, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Not only us humans, not only our needs. Here the Bible says that God opens his hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. James 1 verse 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning we serve a god and he is called the father of lights isn't that the most wonderful thing to think that the gifts and the thing that God does for us, every good and perfect gift is from above. From who? The Father of lights. That is so amazing. Just to think that the God we served is called the Father of lights. Not the Father of lies as the devil, but our Father is the Father of lights. And that is so wonderful. So wonderful to think that every good gift and every perfect gift is from our heavenly Father, the Father of lights. God owns the entire world. Let's read this. Exodus 19 verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be particular treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine your god says all the earth is his psalm 24 verse 1 a psalm of david the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein 
In this little verse, David says that everything belongs to the Lord. Psalm 50, verse 10 to 11, let's read it. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. This is God speaking. He said that the cattle on a thousand hills is his. That is your God. It's your father of lights. Next, we're going to look at God can do miracles to supply. Let's look at the first example from the Old Testament. The widow borrowed vessels and they miraculously filled with enough oil to pay her debts. You can read this in 2 Kings 4 verse 1 to 6. The story about this widow that borrowed more vessels, more containers, so that they could fill it up with a little thing that had some oil in. And it just didn't stop. It just miraculously flowed and flowed until all her debts were paid off and until she um, was debt free. God can supply food. There are a lot of examples in the Bible. Let's read the manna in the desert. You can read this in Exodus 16 verse 12 to 15 is where God supplied manna to feed, I think it was almost a million people or more in the desert. Psalm 78, verse 23 to 25, let's read about that. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat what? Angels' food. He sent their meat to the full. Just look at this. God sent manna to all these people in the desert. And here it says that they did eat angels' food. I don't know. Does angels eat manna? Well, the Bible says. <laughs> Very interesting. In 1 Kings 17 verse 4, we read about the ravens that fed Elijah when he was hiding from Ahab. Now let's read that verse. And it shall be that thou shalt drink from the brook. So God provided the water through the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now we have a lot of ravens here in South Korea. And I love these ravens, you know, with their black feathers. They look like little pastors hopping around here. And so, the, so God commanded the ravens to feed him. Now, where did the ravens get the food? We don't know. Maybe there was some guy with a sandwich store and he prepared sandwiches or a bakery and the ravens just flew through the window and picked them up and take them to Elijah. I don't know what happened, but the ravens fed him. I mean, these ravens are wild. They will not come near you. But here yeah, God told the ravens, go and feed him at the brook. Man, it's wonderful how the Lord, the Lord can use ravens, the very thing that's flying around you every day, the birds in his case. But how about maybe the Lord can use somebody in your family, somebody around you, somebody that you don't even think is able to be used by the Lord. This is what this thing says to me. 1 Kings 19 verse 5 to 6. Elijah looked around and by his head was a jar of water and some baked bread. Let's, list, let's read the verse. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse 6. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cur of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. So wonderful, so wonderful. An angel baked a cake for him on coals and gave him some water. Let's look at the next example. Elisha fed a hundred men, multiplying 20 loaves and some corn. You know the story of Jesus who multiplied the fish and the bread? Did you know that Elisha did it uh, in the Old Testament? Let's read about it. 2 Kings 4 verse 42. And there came a man from Barshalisha and bought the man of God bread of the first fruits. 20 loaves of barley and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, 
Give unto the people that they might eat. Verse 43. And he said to said, What shall I say this before a hundred men? There was a hundred men, a hundred hungry men. He said again, Give the people that they might eat. For this, says the Lord, they shall eat and shall live thereof. Verse 44. So he set it before them, and they did eat and left thereof, according to the word of the Lord. While a hundred hungry men, fed by twenty, uh, what was it, twenty loaves of barley and full ears of corn. A hundred men. They can eat a lot, but here exactly the same like Jesus did. Elisha did this very thing. He fed these men with just 20 loaves of bread. Next point, God supply water. Genesis 21 speaks about Haha dying of thirst and how the Lord provided water in the desert. At Horeb, God brought water out of a rock that you can read in Exodus 17. And God can even purify impure water. In Exodus 15, we read about the bitter waters of Mara that was made sweet. And we also read about the undrinkable waters of Jericho healed. Now, I was very, very fortunate to go to Israel a few times. And I remember visiting Jericho and I remember tasting of that water. The well is still there. And the water is lovely. Now God can even supply clothing. Ladies, you might like this. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29 verse 5. And I have led ye forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you. And thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. Doesn't this sound like some of the great brands we have nowadays, like the New Balances or the Nikes or whatever? But, you know, we think these shoes are amazing. You know, they last five or ten years or whatever, as long as you um, take care of them. But here, for 40 years, 40 years, the clothes and the shoes upon these people did not wax and did not grow old, guys. Um, you know, they were in a desert. Now, I've been to that desert when we visited Israel. It is just sand. There's no trees. There's nothing. It's extremely hot. I remember when we visited that desert, they took us to some kind of a tent. Um, and I thought they, they're going to give us ice cream to cool down. But now they gave us hot tea. They said the hot tea will cool you down. So I know what this verse is talking about, the wilderness. But here the Bible says that it did not grow old. Not their shoes, not their clothes. Now I want to talk about how God provided for me. Lord, my rice bucket is empty. A few years ago, I was living in a small city called Sangju here in South Korea. And I was living all by myself and I had this plastic container that I call my rice bucket. So I would buy, you know, like 10 or 20 kg of rice and put it in there. And that's where my rice came from. So at some stage, my budget ran out, the money finished, the food was finished. And that very morning, my rice bucket was empty. And I remember as I went to my prayer room. Now, here's the secret. I had a prayer room. I had a place where I was talking to the Lord. Every day around about 3 p.m., I would just put on my praise and worship music and start to just talk to the Lord and have a wonderful time with the Lord. But this very day, I went there with my empty rice bucket. And I remember kneeling at my bed and holding it up to heaven and said, God, my rice bucket is empty. Just look at this. And as I was praying that prayer, my phone rang. And I thought, my goodness, I'm praying now. There's no way that I can take this call. But I took the call anyways. And it was one of my friends. And she, is, she owned um, a little school there in Sangju. And she said, Lawrence, number one, can I pick you up in 15 minutes so that we can go for lunch? That was very, very good news. Number two, she said, can you please come with me today? I have this huge event at my school and I need your help. In 15 minutes, she was there. We went for lunch 
We went for the event at school. That day she ordered a lot of foods and snacks. It was kind of a party or a thing at her school. And I remember that night going home with a lot of money that she gave me for, for you know, like a gift and all the food that was left over. And I can testify to you this day, my friend. It's been almost 10 years after that day. And my rice bucket was never empty. Sometimes it gets low, but it's never empty. <laughs> so this is just my little testimony to tell you how the Lord supplied for me. Now, next time we will talk about this more, how God can supply your needs. So today was just like a little appetizer to show you what God did in the Bible. So next time in part two, we're going to talk about how you and I can access um, this promises of God supplying for us. And it's not going to be a get quick rich scheme. It's not going to be positive thinking or all these things that you know we hear about every day. No, it's going to be biblical. And I believe through the wisdom and the Bible, we're going to know how God supply for us. Anyways, God is supplying for us on a daily basis. Not only in times of need, your house, your job, whatever. Remember, God can supply and God will supply and God already supplied all your needs. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and thank you that we could talk about what you did in the Bible. Lord, how you supplied the needs of the people in the desert and the widow and Elisha. And, and so forth. And Father, I pray today that my friend's faith will be pulled up and stirred up, even if the situation is difficult and doesn't look good, Lord, that you will please encourage them and give them hope, Lord, that you are in control. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I will see you next time for part two, where I'm going to talk about you, and we're going to put your name in the stories and the events of the Bible. And you will see how the Lord takes care of you actually already on a daily basis. From me, Pastor Lawrence, goodbye and God bless. Bye-bye.